Hello Nation. Today we're going to talk about artificial sweeteners and with me is one of our star dietitians, Adriana, who's a dietitian at UCSD and does a lot of stuff with us at TCOAD. I'm going to jump right into it. Um, there's a lot of different artificial sweeteners. There's some controversies which we'll talk about and uh, I have my favorite. I won't tell you yet but uh, give us a little blurb on the differences between these sweeteners and I started with been on the market the longest and been on the market the most recent? So that's a really good question that you bring up. We have patients who ask all the time about artificial sweeteners. So we have Sweet and Low here, Equal, and Splenda. And then we also have Stevia, which is a little bit different. So these three sweeteners here are considered artificial sweeteners. I have patients who ask all the time how much of these sweeteners they can consume a day. And the FDA has a different level for each of them. And you can find that online. Um, it's called the acceptable daily intake, and it depends on your weight and also what kind of sweetener you're using. We calculated before we started filming that I could have up to 110 packets of Splenda <laughs> a day, if you could believe that. So for those of you that worry about, is that too much? Am I drinking too much Diet Coke? There's just no way you're going to be able to go over the maximum amount. Right. So like I said, that, avail that information is available online. We also have Stevia. And another popular one that's a little bit newer is called monk fruit. Those two sweeteners are natural. They're made from plants. So this has a little bit, this doesn't actually have an acceptable daily intake level because it's a little bit different, but these are more natural. They're processed differently. You're gonna find these in things like the buy drinks. Um, patients really like drinking these because they're more natural, but some people don't like them because the taste is a little bit different. Well, you know, I've seen, I've seen this on sale at like Whole Foods, you know, it's natural. Right. Yeah. I notice on the back here it says vegan too. So, I mean, I, you know what? I, I say it comes down to personal It choice. does. You know? It I, does. I personally like uh, Splenda and uh, Equal's not bad and I think Sweet and Low has an aftertaste. There goes our sponsorship for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, but, it does depend on kind of what your taste is and everybody perceives the sweetness of these completely different. Yeah, now what about cooking? Um, I know that do they, does it denature so you, you lose the sweetness if you make cookies or with it or? So actually, so you can use these products in baking. So the Splenda comes in like a granulated form. So if you took a cup of Splenda, cup for cup with sugar, this is almost 600 times sweeter than regular table sugar. So they do make this in granulated form and I believe that they make a Stevia monk fruit and they do make um, one that are regular table sugar mixed with some of the artificial sweeteners. So you can kind of get best of both worlds. Yeah, I heard you don't have the bulk. Now what about the blends you were showing me? Um, you brought a sample in this little packet here. Yeah, so a lot of people like the idea of a natural zero calor calorie sweetener like the Stevia, but they hate the taste. So there's actually some that blend Stevia and monk fruit together. Um, so they don't have as much of that bitter aftertaste and people tend to like those a lot more. So those are also available in a lot of stores like Sprouts and Whole Foods as well. Okay, lastly, I've been reading about on the internet, a lot of medical journals that people who use artificial sweeteners get heavier. Right. And, and that to me makes absolutely no sense. And I'll give you my theory, I'll let you go first. So people ask that question often. If I, does artificial sweetener raise my blood sugar? Does it, will I gain weight if I start having artificial sweetener? So as you can see, when somebody has one of these like Diet Cokes or the Buy Drink, you won't get a blood sugar spike. And that's because your body metabolizes it differently than regular sugar. Now, sometimes if people are drinking diet beverages, they think they can have more calories in regular food. So it's possible that you can consume more calories that way. Um, the other thing you have to think about is a lot of people when they're having things like Diet Coke often, what are they having that with? Sometimes things like hamburgers and pizza. So if somebody's increasing their intake of diet soda, they could also be increasing their intake of foods that aren't, that are more calorie dense. You mean people are putting this on their, but banana splits, hot fudge sundaes, Sometimes. It's, it's not helping their weight at all. <laughs> but I, I think the other thing is a, a quick statistical word of advice. You know, there's a thing in medicine caused, called direct cause and effect relationship and an association. So a lot of the epidemiologists, they say, gee, there, there's an association between people who are heavy and artificial sweeteners. So artificial sweeteners must cause obesity. And I don't think that's the whole answer, but I do, I do believe that if you have something that has very little calories in it, 
uh, it's not going to affect your weight unless you have some secondary behaviors that uh, Adriana was mentioning. So with that, I'm going to close and say thank you so much for joining and leave you with this thought. When you go to Starbucks <laughs> and you usually only use one Splenda in your coffee, is it okay to take a couple extra for later? <laughs> so long, nation. Mm -hmm.